Flash was one of the best things to happen on the internet. Being able to create any kind of animation or game that could be shared and played by anyone was simply amazing. This resulted in a plethora of Flash content throughout the years until it was unfortunately discontinued. And out of all of them, there was one that I always kept at the back of my mind. A Flash series that was a video game parody with an interesting story. And it all culminated into a final episode that you would have to play for yourself. The series I'm talking about is called Dan the Man. Dan the Man is a very popular side-scrolling arcade beat-em-up that originally started off as a simple Flash animation created by a small studio consisting of only 6 people. The web series consisted of 7 videos or stages, with the player Dan being inside a video game world where the way forward isn't as simple as it seems. And after 13 years since its debut, it has garnered quite a reputation, with over 120 million views combined for the web series, and a very successful mobile game, Dan the Man has cemented a piece of itself in gaming history. And while the overarching story of Dan can be summarized as NPCs being sentient, I believe there's more to Dan's story than meets the eye. Both to the series and to the creators as there's a certain theme that ties both of them together. And the best way to find out the true nature of Dan is to start from the beginning. Dan the Man was created on March 23rd, 2010 by Studio Joho, an Australian indie studio known for their amazing 2D animations, with Dan being their second and most prominent project at the time. Each episode was labeled as stages, and there were 7 stages in total, with an 8th final stage that was teased to become an upcoming video game. The story, or game, takes place in a hybrid time period of the medieval era and modern day. To the west are the humble villagers that live in rural houses and tend to most of the crops and livestock. Meanwhile, to the east is where the king lives, alongside the upper class folk and businesses. Even though he is king, he is very incompetent. In reality, his advisor is the one in charge. However, it's not as peaceful as it looks as there's an ongoing power crisis due to the excessive use of electronics, with the advisor using several unethical means to solve it. This led to a group of oppressed villagers to start a rebellion in secret, gathering weapons and hijacking the kingdom's guardian robots, ready to strike when the time is right. And in the middle of it all is Dan. Dan is your typical standard video game protagonist that is controlled by an unknown player. At first, it plays like a normal game, but Dan will soon find out that it isn't what it seems. The game doesn't explicitly tell you what to do, just to keep moving forward. In reality, it seems the only way to progress is by approaching a stage as if it was real life. Let me explain. The original cover for the web series was a whole lot different than it was now, but what's important is the tagline that fills us in to what kind of game Dan is in. With NPCs acting like real people and Dan being the only one to know just the game, the stages revolve around Dan making choices to improve himself as a person rather than just beating the final boss. In fact, after rewatching the whole series again, I noticed something very interesting. Each stage actually fits in well with the 7 deadly sins. As in each one, Dan has to either overcome or get involved with a certain sin in some kind of way. Quick side note, if you haven't already, I highly recommend watching all 7 episodes first as it's well worth it, taking only less than 25 minutes and you might get more out of my video knowing the lore ahead of time. You can also watch the other 9 stages which is like the second season of the series, but I won't go into much detail as the first one for reasons I'll go over later in this video. So with that out of the way, let's start with stage 1, which is about greed. Dan gets stuck after beating the boss and rescuing the princess, so he tries to continue by blindly following the princess's demands like buying a house, a car, and an expensive dog, but it goes nowhere, with Dan ending up in crippling death and eventually getting a game over. The stage only ends after the reset, as instead of rescuing the princess, he hands the key over to the bank owner, thus allowing him to be free from greed. Right off the bat, this is a real thing people go through where they or someone close to them don't understand the value of money and need material possessions until they end up deep in debt, unable to escape and unlike Dan, there is no second life to escape it. Next is stage 2, which is about sloth. Dan befriends a girl named Josie after defeating a giant robot attacking the inn that she lives at. The two then enjoy a short moment of peace in a bonus stage by collecting hearts together until they are eventually stuck. 
and then forced back into reality as they are attacked by jetpack ninjas. After the fight, Dan learns a new ability to communicate with NPCs, which he uses to save the both of them by confessing his love to Josie to reactivate the bonus stage as they were falling to their demise. All in all, it was a simple stage to start Dan off for future stages to come, which fits Sloth kind of well. Next stage is about Wrath. In the aftermath, Josie is traumatized by the carnage they had caused, but Dan, being a normal player, nonchalantly jumps over their corpses where he would celebrate their victory at the end, only to be interrupted by the drunk guy. The drunk picks a fight with Dan, only to fail, which results in the police intervening and then Dan is given the death penalty. While this was a joke scene, I do like how it adds more to the world of Dan, especially with there being an entire law and court system. From there, Dan has two more lives to do things differently, but of course, Dan being Dan, refuses. But in his final third life, he stumbles across the dojo of the Lightmaster. After heading inside, Dan learns of the drunk man's past, how his father was an abusive drunk that beat him and his wife until he dragged himself to death, leaving the drunk man alone with nothing but nightmares of his trauma, which led to him drinking to numb the pain. But it was only a temporary solution, which led to the cycle repeating through Dan. Now enlightened with this knowledge and taught a new command by the Lightmaster, Dan is able to break this wrathful cycle and befriend the drunk man. Stage 4 is a little reprieve from the violence of the last two as it's about lust. Dan and Josie try to spend more time together but can't due to control limitations. Dan tries to get some advice from two geezers but both of them practically give the same idea of love, only for Josie to reject both. And while the bald geezer gives up, the hat geezer actually gives one final piece of advice which was to ask her instead of just two random guys at a bar. And it actually works, with Josie teaching Dan a new command and the two spend a romantic night together. And with a cutscene like this, I probably don't have to explain why it's about lust. Next stage is Pride, and it starts with a dragon attack. Dan rushes in to fight, only to be completely outmatched, but bought enough time for the King's Guard to fend it off. Afterwards, they celebrate Dan's heroism in the King's Mansion, where the King and Dan quickly become friends. All the while, Josie is lured down to the lower levels to find out the truth behind the Kingdom's power source, and who the ninjas really were. Josie helps the rebels free the dragon, but is briefly interrupted by the Dark Master. However, thanks to the baby dragon, both Josie and Dan were able to escape the castle and reunite with the mother dragon in the end. This one was a bit hard to fit in, but I think the theme of pride comes from several characters. From the king taking pride in his status, Dan taking pride in his heroics, Josie taking a pride in herself, and most importantly, that one rebel guy who took pride in his cause. Now we're at stage 6, Envy. Dan manages to connect to an online server and encounters for the first time a real human player named Anna. Apparently, the area they're in is some kind of MMO the developers put in when you beat the game. Anna then invites Dan to hang out at her place, which he does, but not before calling Josie an NPC, which leaves her heartbroken. While Josie is struggling to get over Dan, Dan is enjoying his time with Anna. While this stage was harsh, it can apply to reality. And it's also a starting point, as in this one, Dan didn't learn any kind of lesson or changed his ways. But the stage was still completed because of Josie. She was able to get over Dan and improve herself to continue living her life. Which also shows that the whole series isn't just about Dan's growth, but the other characters we meet. Which leads us to the final stage and sin, which is gluttony. Now while gluttony might seem like it's mainly for food, it's a bit similar to greed as it's all about getting more than what you need or deserve. As it starts with Dan trying to get back with Josie despite what he put her through, which Josie aptly sums up. After multiple attempts to get her back, Dan slips up and falls to his death and loses his last life. For Josie however, that was his only life and is devastated. With Dan temporarily out of the picture and the dragons freed, the advisor created a new plan to generate power, which was to enslave the common folk and make them run on treadmills or die to some spikes below. Majority of the board members were corrupt so they all approved, all except two concerned executives, who warned the rebels about the plan but were swiftly executed. Then, with the help of the Dark Master, the advisor is able to have enough villagers to power the kingdom. 
one of them being Josie who was ambushed by the Dark Master after she had seeked guidance from the Light Master to cure her from her trauma. And as all hope seemed lost, Dan respawns and finds himself in the center of it all, with the rebels ready to start a war and the villagers wanting to end the conflict with peace. So Dan, being the main protagonist, is given the final choice, and a stage is set for the upcoming playable Stage 8. Studio Joho would partner up with Halfbrick to bring Dan the man to life, as both were Australian-based companies. Halfbrick were a very reputable company, with a history of being great to their community and producing some of the most iconic mobile games to date. It took them about 3 years, but soon Stage 8 was available to play. And for the most part, it was a very great game, having a positive reception on launch with glowing reviews. As for the story itself, it's mostly told through cutscenes. Dan and the geezer set off with the rebellion to rescue Josie and the villagers, traveling across 36 different levels across the kingdom, from the village to the sewers underground, and finally inside the main castle. As Dan and the crew got closer, he began to notice that not all the rebels were noble with their intentions with many of them looting during the chaos and even executing any prisoners they had. Which actually makes sense when you consider in stage 2 that after Dan and Josie took down the giant robot attacking the inn, they were immediately attacked by the same ninjas. So while some were devoted to the cause, others were in it for themselves, which manifested in the end game boss, whereas instead of fighting the advisor or even the dark master, the true final enemy was just some random ninja that betrays the whole group to try and take over the entire kingdom for themselves. After a long fight, the last rebel in their final moments detonates the bombs they planted prior, killing everyone inside. Luckily though, Dan found an extra life on the roof and he instantly respawns back at the start. And instead of doing some elaborate way to avoid the conflict, in classic Dan fashion, he just beats up the nearest rebels, ending stage 8. While this might not tie into any of the seven sins, it does have a similar theme to stage 3, which is a cycle of violence. Had Dan chosen to keep fighting against the kingdom this way, it would have just ended the same. As a matter of fact, a web series version of stage 8 was made after the game, which confirmed that Dan would repeat the whole thing again, leaving only the bald geezer to learn a lesson from this experience, that sometimes it's better to not get involved and just enjoy the moment as you never know how good you have it till it's gone. After the success of both the web series and games, Dan would go on to be a very iconic gaming figure, at least in the mobile side of the gaming, with many fan arts and fan animations being made to show their love for Dan. Even Barry Steak Fries, the other mascot for Half Brick, formed a rivalry with Dan. Uh, I am Barry Steak Fries. Dan the man thought he was uh, too good to do a video blog, but uh, I am not. Studio Joho would animate a few more things for Halfbrick, but soon moved on to bigger projects like Final Space and Bluey. With Studio Joho gone, it seemed like Dan the Man would come to an end. But five years later in 2022, Halfbrick would continue Dan's story with the continuation to the web series, having a new animation team behind the helm. So what does it all mean? Well, in my opinion, Dan the Man is a story about determination. Not just for the series, but overall. Studio Joho has been animating for well over 14 years, never giving up on their passion, and all that hard work paid off as they would eventually create some of the best adult and children media to date. As for stages, it's a story of growth for Dan and all the other characters in the series, and can be a reflection of our own lives. Not everything in this world can be solved so easily. Whether with money, power, or fame, it can be easy just to give up and run from your problems. But sometimes there are things that are worth fighting for, and even if it doesn't work out right away, keep on trying. Try a new way to do something, or learn to view it from another's perspective. Sometimes all it takes to become a better person is just to keep moving forward. Thanks for watching. This video makes it my fourth Dan the Man related video. I didn't think I was gonna make another video for Dan, but you guys voted for it and it's been a year since my last one. Although I will admit I procrastinated a lot during this production. Hopefully I got it out of my system and videos will start coming out more frequently. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this video. 
I know I don't really say that often, but I'm gonna start doing it for every video as the more likes and subs I get, the higher chance I can actually be in the algorithm. So a big thank you to those that always like my videos and subscribe. If you haven't already, please do so, it'll be a big help for the channel. The next main video I want to tackle will either be a full depth video on the story of Demo or Shadow Fight 2. Alternatively, I also want to do another mystery video, this time related to a very obscure Japanese mobile game. I might do a poll about it later in the community tab, so be sure to stop by and vote for what you'd like to see next. So for now, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.